right. Welcome. It's Todd and Ryan back again. Today we've got a different kind of idea here. A different kind of song. Theme song. And a new song. Here, we'll pause that. <laughs> Just trying to be calm. Our goal here is to actually like not surprise people. Trying to be calm, trying to be easy. Uh, what we're going to do here for a little while is talk about the do's and don'ts in the workplace. And we actually were together uh, a little while ago in uh, co-located teaching. And actually, my pad dropped, so let me grab that. And what we've got, we came up with this huge list of do's and don'ts. We've got a bunch of them, like just pads and pad, all, all sorts of ideas. We're thinking about do's and don'ts in the workplace. And one of the big topics that came up in this course that we were teaching on site, we were in Albany, New York, right? So we were um, actually left our houses mm -hmm. and went and uh, went to, and taught a class on site. Had a really good time out in Albany. Really awesome company. Good group of people. But a theme kept coming up, Todd, that I think we kept pulling on, and that was do not surprise people. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's interesting because I think this is a theme that we've seen quite a bit. Um, and we talk about this a lot as it correlates to evidence-based management, right? Um, how not to surprise people. I think we've both certainly made this mistake before we were actually war storytelling <laughs> about how, you know, uh, like one time I had um, some really objective data and showed it to a CIO in front of their peer, a group of their peers for the first time and surprised them. And uh, it wasn't a good surprise. It was an off guard surprise and didn't give a moment or two to really um, give that person an opportunity to reflect on it. And I think I can think of a bunch of times where I've done this in the workplace I don't want to say a bunch of times. Let's say I heard, learned some hard lessons about not surprising people early. Um, and uh, yeah, just not, not going to do that again as much as possible. I just, I, I remember working in a, in a fortune 200 financial company and I worked directly for a VP and really great mentor, really, really awesome person to work for. And the one time he almost fired me is because he got surprised by me. Right. I didn't tell him something about a project uh, as soon as I knew it. We walked into a meeting. He said one thing. I had to contradict him with information because if that information had gone up, it would have been a much bigger problem. And after the meeting, he's like, hey, man, you've done great work for me, uh, which is why you're still here. But if you ever surprise me again in a meeting like that or anywhere, you will be exited. Like mm -hmm. he's like, the one thing you cannot do is surprise me. He's like, if you know something, tell me. If something's going on and it might may or may not happen, tell me. If you know it's not going to happen, but it still might happen, tell me. He's like, I'd rather know and be able to strategize with you quickly rather than getting shocked, blindsided, or surprised uh, in a meeting in front of peers. Um, and it was a huge deal. Like he was dead on serious. He's like, if this happens again, I don't care how good of a job you're doing, you're out. You're no good to me if you're surprising me. And it really stuck with me that. You know, if you know something, you got to talk about it. Um, to Todd's point about EBM, if some data shows up on a dashboard uh, that's surprising, don't let it be a surprise in, in public. You mm -hmm. know, make sure that, you know, show people the data that could be embarrassed by it the most first. Give them a chance to digest it. Help them develop a narrative that is beneficial, but also uh, not shocking or surprising to others. You know, really really look to avoid the big surprises in almost every aspect of your work life. Yeah. I think this is like the old average or the old adage of over communication. Uh, yeah. I've, I've never been in a situation where I, I over communicated. I don't think you can over communicate. Now that being said, not everything has to be a three alarm fire, right. but just, um, you know, from a individual standpoint, maybe uh, hope isn't a strategy. Right. I hope I can really solve this problem, but then it builds. Right. And then it can. Um, I, I think that I think that I steal this line from you all the time where it's uh, bad news is not like fine one. It doesn't age well. Right. I think you right. say that quite a bit in our classes and uh, it's true. You know, so I think over communication, don't surprise people. If something surprises you, 
uh, then make sure that the next tier over or up or down or wherever it goes uh, doesn't get that same surprise. And uh, I think just be just we need openness in the workplace. I mean, what if we, we can give a, a practical example real quick, quick in Scrum? One of the contexts where this, this idea came up in the class we were teaching was a product owner in a sprint review. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we like to say about that is, you know, because people will ask a lot of good questions around, well, how does a scrum team and a product work together during a sprint? And Todd's developed a really good activity that kind of flushes that out and, and helps people. And and so at the end of that, it's well, you know, this the maybe the product owner is accepting the work at the end of it. It's like, no, 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 no. And we had to pause this and say, again, we don't want to surprise people. So if a product owner is ever surprised about what he or she sees in a sprint review, something has fallen apart there. There's been a lack of communication. There's been, because by the time we get to sprint review, the product owner being a member of the scrum team should be totally on board with what's being uh, discussed, demonstrated mm -hmm. and planned into the future. And if they're surprised by anything, uh, something has really fallen apart there. Yeah. And I mean, they stand the most to lose in that event. We, we, we speak of that quite a bit. A product owner really stands uh, um, the, the uh, if something is surprising, then the ability for them to properly have the conversations that they need to make decisions about what's in the product backlog, what's next in the product backlog, or if there's anything new to add, reorder, delete in the product backlog, that's the purpose of that. If you're caught off guard and you're surprised by something, um, it really might just be degrading transparency there and and then and then limiting the ability for you to inspect and adapt to what's happening with the product uh, and move forward appropriately with it. Nobody likes surprises. I didn't like any surprises as a, as a product owner, especially. So, yeah, I think that just holds true in most parts of life. When we surprise people with with unexpected things, I mean, maybe a birthday party is OK. Maybe I really don't like that either. I'd rather know what's <laughs> happening, but I think the surprises really damage trust as well. We talk a lot about that too, uh, where trust is super transactional. It takes a lot of good moments to build up the trust bank. It takes one bad one to wipe it out. You pop and it like a balloon. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. a surprise is a good way to pop that balloon and get your account back to zero or into the negative when yeah. it comes to trust. Yeah. You know, we, we, grow we, we live in a world where it's increasingly important to have a high say do ratio right yeah. uh the, the world's full of distrust and so surprising people is one of those ways to continue to erode that and so in the workplace and even in life try not to surprise people as todd said uh I, over index on communication mm -hmm. you know, i once had a cio who was very big on uh, in every meeting we were in with him it was over index on communication like let people decide what to filter, but get information out, send follow up emails, make sure that people are in the room, make sure that we know what's going on. You know, miscommunication destroys transparency, destroys our ability to execute well um, and leads to a lot of bad things. So, yeah, just even something as simple as like, you know, you're on a Zoom or you're walking past someone in the office, your boss or whoever that may be. You just be like, oh, my goodness, I forgot I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. I'll be in two hours late. Yeah. Instead of just showing up two hours late, right? Like things like that. Just, it helps to set clear expectations. Um, and when, uh, you don't want to surprise anybody, even the smallest of things. Well, even like a silly context, you know, Todd and I were both youth sports coaches, right? What happens when a kid or two decides not to tell you they aren't coming to practice or even worse, they won't be at a game, but you find out five minutes before the start. Yeah. It's huge. What a horrible surprise. The whole game plan, the whole, um, structure of a practice, the whole uh, intention on offense and defense, if you're like me, a football coach, goes out the window and you have to rethink, replan and and recalculate plays. And it's just it's a really it's a blindsiding thing. And it really does leave kind of a bad uh, feeling for people. So even in a silly context like youth sports, which should be a lot just fun about, and all about the kids, surprises lead to, to negative feelings, too. Yeah. Avoid surprises. Yeah, don't surprise people and uh, your work life may be better. All right, let me find the end screen here. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you never miss a video. Uh, Todd and I are 
trying to get back into a regular posting uh, scheme here. So hit that subscribe button so you see, can see what's coming up next. Let us know in the comments. Do you like this idea of the do's and don'ts of the workplace? Uh, we'd be more than happy to continue sharing these. Let us know if you like them and we'll keep them coming. Be sure to check out these other videos. The algorithm thinks you'll like them. We do too. For Todd, I'm Ryan. Go forward and do some great things in the office or remote in your home. But for all, but please, please, please don't surprise people. See you next time.